We're now going to take a look at trimming and straightening images. We'll start off by looking at trimming, and I need to open up a file. Come over here to the 08 trim. Now this is typical of something you might scan. Always seems that no matter how hard you try, you put it in the scanner, and it ends up being a little bit crooked, and you get a white border around it. So let's show you what we do here. I'm going to double-click my hand tool to fill the screen. We trim this white border off using the crop tool. Now what we're going to show you is very easy. It's just like cropping. There's not a whole lot to it. You just have to know that you could do it. Be sure that we don't have any width, height, or resolution values typed in here. And we need to draw a crop box around the entire image. So the best thing to do, again, is come up here to the top left, click and drag from one corner to the other to get that crop box around the entire image. Now all we have to do, put our cursor to the outside, and if you remember from the crop lesson, we could rotate the crop box. We just have to rotate the crop box until it's parallel with the actual image. Once we have that, just grab the top, bottom, left, and right resize nodes and drag them in until you cut off the white. Try not to get exactly on the border between the photo and the white. Trim off a little bit more of the image, because if you try to get right on the border, you end up missing. All that happens when you finally crop it and straighten it, you end up with a white line. You didn't get all the white, and then you have to do it again. Also, if you find the crop resize handle sticking to the edge of the image, in other words, you cannot freely move it the way you would like, that's probably because you have snap-on. If you remember from an earlier lesson, we can turn snap on and off, and the snap to option allows us to control exactly what we're snapping to. In this case, it's the document bounds that's giving us problem. And as you can see, I've already turned snap off. If you have a check mark next to it, just click the word snap, and that'll turn off snap completely. Once you do that, you'll be able to freely move this resize handle to exactly where you want. So I'll get it right around in there, drag it in a little bit on the bottom and a little bit from the edge. And then you just have to crop as normal, double click, and it straightens it up. Now it appears that there's a little white line across the top and on the sides. That's just the way Photoshop is drawing the preview of this image. It's really not there. It's just an optical illusion, so to speak. And that's all there is to straightening. Just make sure you should trim off enough from all the different sides so you don't end up with a little white line, and then you'll have to do it again. If you ended up with a white line that you missed, don't hit undo just draw your crop box again and this time just trim off the little edge that you might still have i'm gonna hit escape to get out of that and then i'll go ahead and close that image so that's all there is to trimming the next thing we want to look at is how to straighten an image maybe you had the camera and it was a little bit tilted and the image came out crooked now we'll open up two images here we have straightening 09 and straightening 10. hit my enter key both images will open now, straighten number 10 is obviously something extreme, and I did that on purpose to, you know, prove a point. But a lot of times you have this slight crookedness. Again, I'll double-click my hand tool. We can see that it's slightly crooked, and that's, you know, I, I'm a photographer, and I do that quite often, so you end up having to straighten it back up. Now, there's two ways to do this in Photoshop CS5. One way is to use the crop tool, and it's very similar to straighten. Now the second way is new to CS5 and it uses the ruler tool and that's grouped in here with the eyedropper. If you right click you'll see the ruler tool and we'll take a look at both of these methods and when you should use one versus the other. I'll first show you the crop method. So we'll come over here, grab the crop tool, make sure there's no values in here and again draw a crop box around the entire image. You then have to find something in the image that you want to use as your reference to straight. I'm going to use the edge of this step. If the edge of this step is straight, then the image should be straight. And all we have to do, again, is rotate our crop box until the crop box is parallel to the edge that you want to be straight. If you can't really tell, you can temporarily drag this edge in and then rotate a little bit until you get it correct. Now, because the area outside of the crop box gets dark, sometimes it's hard to tell if you're on your edge. So drag it down and let go. That'll brighten the area back up, and then you can redrag it to double-check to make sure you're on the edge. So I'm going to drag it on back. Now, we can't have any area of the crop box hanging off the image because those areas will be filled in with a solid color. So what I'm going to do is come up here and just double-click and show you. Remember, it's going to be replaced by the background color. 
all those extra areas will be replaced with the background color. Mine in this case is gray. I'm going to hit Control Z, draw that crop box again, rotate it, temporarily just drag it up there to see if I got it. A little bit off maybe, right about there. Drag it, and then back. Looks pretty good. So we have to drag in on all sides until none of the crop box is hanging outside the image. That means that we will lose part of the image. So I'll drag this in here. Drag that up there. Drag some in there. And then drag some over here. When none of it's hanging outside the image, you just double click and crop. And it straightens the image up. So you will lose part of the image. I'm now going to show you the new way to straighten images in CS5 utilizing the ruler tool. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. Come up here to the eyedropper tool, click and drag to the right. That pops open the menu. Put my cursor over the ruler tool and release, and I've got it. Now the ruler tool is used to measure distances on a photograph. For example, this image right here. Come down here, we see this is about 14.2 inches across. So if I were to grab my ruler tool and click and drag across, and I'll hold the shift key to draw a straight line, we'll find that this is about 14.2 inches. Now, if you look up here to the width and height values, you can see that the width comes out to be 14.2. I've never had to do that, never had a use for it. However, take a look at this new button here called Straighten. In earlier versions of Photoshop, you could still use the ruler tool to straighten images, but you didn't have this nice little straighten button. You had to do a few more steps to be able to do so. Because of that, I sort of stuck with the crop method. But now I'm using this new ruler tool because it's got a nice little straighten button here, so it's pretty easy. Now I'm going to clear that little line that we drew. And all you have to do, again, is find the area that ought to be straight, click and drag your ruler, to go exactly along that line. Now, if you mess up, you can come over here to any point, click and grab it and drag it around to a new location. Now, you can tell that you're on one of the start or the end points when your cursor goes from this plus sign in a little ruler to an arrow and a ruler. And all you have to do now is hit straighten. Boom, straightens it out. It's that simple. If we look to see what happened, I can go back a step. It actually rotated the image and then cropped out that gray area. So it's basically doing what the crop tool did. We draw a crop box, rotate the crop box to be parallel with whatever ought to be straight, and then we sort of dragged in the left, right, top, and bottom to cut off any of that area that was hanging outside of the image. However, we can see that this is a little bit easier. But I do want to point out it only works on images that are sort of slightly crooked. If we came up to something like this, we're going to find out it doesn't really work, and I'll tell you why. I'll come up here, same ruler tool. Click and drag on this. And hit straighten. Now it will straighten it. The problem is, you don't have any control over what gets cut off. It just cuts off an equal amount from all sides, and as a result, in this case, we see Sasha's head gets cut off. We can see that it rotated the canvas and then cropped it. Of course, with no uh, care whatsoever for what it's going to keep and what it's going to get rid of. So what we're going to do here is go back to where it's opened. And I'm going to have to use the crop tool on this one. I'll come over to here, rotate it a good bit. Notice we got to lose a lot of this image. There's not much you can do. If you're this crooked, first off, you need to quit being a photographer. <laughs> but second off, you're going to lose a lot of the image. But see, this time around, what I can do is I can crop... A lot off of there, a lot off of there, you know, and try to avoid cutting her head off. There's no way to get around cutting the feet. And now when I click uh, or double click and crop it, we straighten it up and I kept the part of the image that was important. So if it's extremely crooked, you probably aren't going to be able to use the ruler tool with the straighten button. Because, like I said, you don't have any control over what part of the image is going to cut off. It doesn't know. It just cuts off equally around all sides. It doesn't know that there's a head or somebody's feet or something that's important. So in this case, you're going to have to do it manually. But for these images that are only slightly crooked, 
the ruler tool and the new straighten button works great. If it doesn't, if it ends up cutting off something that ought to be important, then just undo it. You'll have to undo both steps. Remember, you have to undo the rotate, the crop, and the rotate all the way back to open, and then you'll have to do it manually with the crop tool. So that's all there is to it. It's not rocket science. You just have to know that you could do it. So that concludes trimming and straightening. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at actually modifying the canvas size. We're going to add borders to it or areas that we could put a, a caption, etc.